Welcome to Pamili Vlogs and today we are going to discuss an important video and the title is Polyhydramnios. We are going to define what polyhydramnios is. We are going to look at signs and symptoms of polyhydramnios. We are going to look into details, possible causes of polyhydramnios and even complications that may arise uh, due to this polyhydramnios and what are the investigations that we are likely to do uh, to diagnose this polyhydramnios and eventually management of polyhydramnios. Welcome again to Family Vlogs and we are very very happy that we are clicking 100,000 views plus and this is due to your loyalty. Do subscribe to this channel, share this video, comment in the comment section and always like this channel. Thank you so much and let us do it and watch this video now until the end. Definition of polyhydramnios is accumulation of excess amniotic fluid into the uterus, in the uterus of a pregnant mother. And this condition is very, very rare and normally affects about 1% of general population and it may be acute or Chronic. In understanding uh, polyhydramnios, we should be able to know what is amniotic fluid. This is a clear, slightly yellowish fluid that surrounds the baby intrauterine. That is in the uterus when the baby is developing. And this amniotic fluid is very, very important in that it provides protection for this fetus intrauterine. Normally it cushions or cushions the baby against uh, shock, external uh, shock, and it acts as a shock absorber. If something hits the uterus, it's the amniotic fluid that protect the particular child. Uh, it also protects the cord, the umbilical cord development, and also it is very, very important in lubrication of the parts of the fetus. Uh, especially lubrication of the hands and feet and this normally pre prevents webbing of the feet or even webbing of the hand and also it's very very important in muscles and bone development and mostly also very very vital for central nervous system lung and gastrointestinal tract development so uh, this amniotic fluid is very very important and when it is uh, in excess that is what we call polyhydramnios is it, it pose uh, threats to uh, a mother intrauterine it can affect the baby it can affect the mother and when the amniotic fluid is also low we are going to discuss that in terms of the parameters that we gauge in relation to what are the minimum levels that we should have in terms of uh, amniotic fluids by investigations. Now, uh, when it is low, uh, when it is less, we call it oligohydramnios. When it is excess, we call it polyhydramnios. You should be able to note that amniotic fluid is also very, very important because it normally insulates the baby and by doing so, it normally regulates the temperature of this particular baby intrauterine and also the very most also important is that it has antibodies that normally prevents infection intrauterine. So this particular fluid is very, very important. That's why when it is excess or when it is low, it is very important to investigate and know why it is like. Now, it is very, very important to know what are the possible causes of this polyhydramnios. One of the leading causes uh, is um, infections, infection, and we use an acronym TORCH, that is T-O-R-C-H, abbreviation uh, to help us know this particular infection that might cause this polyhydramnios. Now T is Toxoplasma gondii or Toxoplasma gondii. Uh, this is a parasite, uh, that's an infection, it's a parasite that is normally found in cut feces and even contaminated food. So it is very, very important for a gravid mother or a pregnant mother to 
boil water or to cook meat well because toxoplasma gondii is found in undercooked food especially meat uh, so we should be able to cook our food well and make sure that we boil and treat water O is for other infections like uh, syphilis, coxsackie virus, Zika virus uh, uh, those are viruses that we should be able uh, to know even parvo virus is in these other viruses chickenpox is also forming this and lastly uh, varicella zoster r is for rubella or german measles and c is uh, cytomegalovirus and eventually h is herpes zoster Secondly, another cause of polyhydramnios is maternal diabetes. Maternal diabetes normally causes hyperglycemia and this normally leads to high urine output uh, from the fetus developing intrauterine. And you know, intrauterine fetus normally uh, swallow amniotic fluid, urinate in that amniotic fluid, and you should be able to know that bigger percentage of amniotic fluid is urine of the fetus is urine of the fetus so maternal diabetes is a very very uh other cause of uh polyhydramnios there's what we call twin to twin transfusion syndrome that is when one twin receives uh more blood uh other than the other twin and even amniotic fluid develop higher in the other twin other than the other twin so twin pregnancy or multiple pregnancies is another predisposing factor or another cause of polyhydramnios we have what we call birth defects birth defects that is affecting the gut that is oesophageal atresia duodenal atresia and even uh, those affecting the brain and encephaly and even uh, the cleft palate cleft lip or facial cleft is also very important in this particularly when it normally prevents uh, the fetus intrauterine uh, from swallowing uh, amniotic fluid so uh, these are birth defects that somebody a, uh, a fetus develops intrauterine may be due to uh, some several factors that we may not uh, discuss uh, birth defects by now now we have we call fetal renal disorder uh, this one normally increase uh, the volume of urine production in triuterine and this normally uh, increases a lot of amniotic fluid uh, intrauterine we have recess incompatibility or recess isoimmunization is thought uh, to develop this amniotic fluid in excess intrauterine and then we have fetal anemia that one when fetus has some malfunctions in that what we call hematological uh, defici de deficiency intrauterine then the fetus develops anemia and this may pose uh, an increase in the amniotic fluid intrauterine and then it is also thought that microsomia that's big babies normally urinate a lot and they uh, form by doing this there's a lot of urine which is produced into the uh, into the uterus that is the amniotic fluid now becoming uh, excess so those are some of the possible causes of uh, uh, excess production of amniotic fluid Intra now intra. how will this mother present what are the signs and symptoms of this mother we look at this mother wholesomely we look at the, the we palpate the uterus you find the uterus is larger than dead or the uterus is big uh, the abdomen is big due to that excess accumulation of fluid so the mother also may the when the when the uterus is enlarged and it's big normally pushes the diaphragm up the diaphragm pushes the lungs and this particular patient develop difficulty in breathing so most of them also will uh, present with uh, 
epigastric pain, that is what we normally call heartburn. They may also develop constipation. They may also develop condition and sometimes they can eventually uh, develop fecal impaction. So heartburn is very, very key and also uh, that uh, development of, uh, of, it, of, of fecal impaction may pose threats to the mother and this one may even eventually bring a complication of uh, intestinal obstruction if it's not uh, taken care of and eventually when the pressure is too much then this particular uh, gravid mother will develop lower limb swelling or what we call edema so it is very very important uh, to note that these particular signs and symptoms may worsen and may pose threat both to the mother and to the developing. Excess amniotic yes. fluid can cause complication both to the mother and to the child. And this one can be uh, before delivery, that is antepartum, or after delivery, that is postpartum. A mother will, may prevent with uh, placenta previa, placenta abruptio, or even premature rupture of membrane. We've discussed that and kindly watch the videos about placenta abruptio or placenta previa uh, or premature rupture of membrane. And when this occurs, then a mother may even uh, give birth to a child which, uh, which has no life or stillbirth or stillbirth. The child, or the child may also, or the fetus may also die intrauterine that one we call intrauterine fetal demise so it's very very important uh, to take care of this particular mother when she has uh, this polyhydramnios even the cord might be affected and the mother may even develop a cord prolapse before a uh, delivery so those are complications that may arise when a mother has polyhydramnios during pregnancy it is very very important to diagnose this particular mother when uh, we suspect that the mother has uh, what we call polyhydramnios. We may do a uh, random blood sugar to make sure that the mother has no diabetes. We do uh, rhesus typing, that is rhesus factors. Then very very important, we should be able to do what we call ultrasound or pelvic scan or obstetric scan so most of our facilities we are able to do um, what we call ultrasound and most mothers will come at you and uh, they will ask you several questions about this particular ultrasound and what will happen when uh, what will happen to my baby because of this excess fluid maybe the sonographer has explained to her that uh, uh, you have excess amniotic fluid and then now what next now there are some parameters that we normally use uh, in gauging uh, this particular problem uh, when ultrasonographer presents to us the, the ultrasound we call we normally we are interested interested mostly in amniotic fluid index amniotic fluid index when this amniotic fluid index, and most people will say what is AFI, AFI, amniotic fluid index, when it is greater than 25, when it's greater than 25, the parameter, that one we normally start suspecting polyhydramnios. We normally suspect polyhydramnios, but when it is less than five, now we suspect oligohydramnios. But now we have the parameter, the gauge, the normal range of amniotic fluid index which should be 8 to 18 cent the normal amniotic fluid index should be 8 to 18 centimeters so when it is above 25 we suspect what we call polyhydramnios in management of um, polyhydramnios when a woman is presenting with heartburn we normally live by giving antiacids and we can also go ahead and do what we call aminosynthesis that is we remove the excess amniotic fluid by performing a simple procedure guided by ultrasound 
and also we may uh, introduce what we call indomethacin to uh, relieve the increased production of this amniotic fluid and when we do this we do this when it is uh, not past 32 weeks because this one will uh, lead to a premature uh, closure of ductus arteriosus uh, when you give indomethacin before 32 weeks it's very very dangerous and i say again it may lead to premature closure of ductus arteriosus and you should be able to know that when the child is developing intrauterine there are no lungs there is a communication between uh, pulmonary artery and aorta and this one normally helps in perfusion of oxygen through the maternal uh, through the placenta and when the baby is born then the ductus arteriosus normally closes but in intrauterine it's open so if you give this drug before 32 weeks it can pose threats it can pose threats to the unborn fetus by closing ductus arteriosus intrauterine and this may lead to intrauterine fetal demise so if you love this channel kindly hit the notification button subscribe turn it on for more videos that we post muchas gracias and see you in the next video